Right, welcome back. Yeah? So, we were looking at this example here. Remember that this should be, yeah, the present value must be a negative yeah, to indicate that it is a deposit. If it is positive here, then it will be a borrowing. Yeah? Okay, so this question is a deposit, therefore this is negative. Yeah? The future value is what we want to compute, so leave that blank for the moment. Then annual rate, yeah? so you just put that as 5. You don't put this as percentage because it's already percentage here. Yeah? Period, you put that at 5. But note this, yeah? before solving, go to the compounding. Yeah? This compounding is monthly, that's by default. Uh, so this problem, the compounding is annually. Yeah? What is compounding? Compounding means the ad addition of interest to the principal. Yeah? That is done only once a year, annually. Yeah? In this example, therefore, it's annual. Yeah? So you've got all this. The three elements are known. This is known. The present value is known. The annual rate is known. Okay, The interest rate is known. Yeah? And the period, the term. Is known, yeah? So three elements are known. The fourth element is unknown. Yeah? So you will solve for that. Just click on this future value. Yeah? And you get this value. And this is positive. Yeah? 1276.28 which is the same answer as we got earlier. Right. What if, if we change this to positive? Okay. If this is positive, okay, what would be the future value? Yeah? Compute this and it will become negative. Note that eh? if this is positive, this will become negative. Okay, and if this is uh, negative or this, if this is positive, this will become negative. Yeah? That is what we mean by the sign convention. Yeah? Why? If it is a deposit, okay, uh, then this will be positive, right? Okay, let's put that, uh, sorry, negative, yeah? deposit. Okay. Now, this will become positive because this is what you will see. This is a cash inflow at the end of five years. There is a cash outflow now. But if you reverse this, yeah, if you change this to positive and you compute the future value, it will become negative. Yeah? What does that mean? It means that you borrow $1,000 now. You will have to pay after one year, 1276.28. This is like a borrowing transaction, yeah? not a deposit transaction. So the negative and positive signs are very crucial for spreadsheet as well as for the financial calculator. Yeah? Now this is not a financial calculator. Yeah? Financial calculator uh, you have to buy. Okay, I would encourage uh, those students who are uh, doing uh, finance programs, yeah? those who are enrolled in the finance program or those who want, uh, wish to major or minor yeah, in the finance program to buy the financial calculator. Okay, and this financial calculator will have all these keys. Yeah, these keys. And then you can click on this to get the answer. Yeah, you don't have to remember the formula. Okay, but uh, as I mentioned, our main method yeah, for this course uh, is to use the uh, formula. You can bring in the financial calculator for the examination, yeah, but uh, you must show working. Yeah, otherwise you lose marks. You don't show working. And the working marks are allocated based on the use of the formula, not based on the use of financial calculator. Yeah? Therefore, if you're using all the other methods, yeah, for example, if you're using the time value table, if you're using the spreadsheet, or if you're using the financial calculator, all these can be used as supplementary methods yeah, to check your answer. But the main method, the main method, excuse me, should be based on the formula yeah? and marks will be allocated based on the working that you show using the formula. Therefore, it's important yeah, to uh, know how to use the formula and show your working. Alright, so with that, we move back yeah, to the slide. Okay, uh, So we have shown you the calculation using spreadsheet and the financial calculator and for this, you need to note the sign convention. Yeah? One, the present value must be positive or negative, and the future value will be the opposite of the present value. Yeah? All right. So, if depending on the problem, if it is a deposit, then the future value, sorry, the present value will be negative, yeah? and the future value will be positive. If it is a borrowing, then the present value will be positive, and the future value will be negative. All right. Let's move on to the next slide. Alright, yeah, 
let's look at another example of this future value. We are still with future value here, yeah? uh, focusing on future value, the first key concept. Suppose you had a relative uh, deposit of, uh, had a relative yeah? deposit, $10 at 5.5% interest 200 years ago. Now, notice, and this is uh, an interesting problem. Uh, because this deposit was made in the past, 200 years ago, yeah, one uh, ten dollars, okay, and you earn 5.5 percent interest on that amount every year for 200 years. How much would the investment be worth today? Yeah, so this is like asking for the value today, which is like present value, yeah, but this is not present value. Okay, why? Okay, let's look at this. Okay, in any sim, this is also a simple time value of money problem, yeah. So, identify the three known elements first. What are the three known elements? This is known, $10. Okay. You know the interest rate, which is 5.5% okay, per year. And you know the term, 200. Yeah? This two is not a problem. Yeah? This is quite obvious. The R and the N yeah, is clear. But what is this? Is this present value or future value? Okay. Yeah? Note this. This is given... Okay, and this is known, therefore, it is uh, the present value. Yeah? Why? Because the future value is what we want to know. Yeah? But even though it says what is the investment worth today, yeah? like present. Yeah? But this is future value. The worth today is future value compared to relative to the deposit made 200 years ago. Yeah? Because this is later than the cash flow here. Therefore, this is future value. If this is future value, this must be present value. Yeah? So, to know that. Yeah? So, this is present value. This is known. The R yeah, is known. 5.5%. And 200 yeah, year term is the N. Yeah? The third element that is known. The fourth element, the future value, is not known. Therefore, you solve for that. Okay. Yeah? So, here... The answer is this. Future value at the end of... Year 200 will be $10 this is the present value now multiplied by 1 plus R 5.5% or if you convert this to decimal it will be 0 0.055 yeah? now these two 1 plus 5.5% you raise this to the power of 200 okay then you multiply with 10 yeah therefore you get this answer 447 uh, or 447 dollars there should be a dollar sign here yeah 189.84 okay so this is the uh, answer and can you use the time value table for this okay yeah here you cannot use the table why because the table doesn't give you 5.5 percent interest yeah it gives you five percent or six percent yeah not so this is a weakness of this time value table yeah the time value ta table does not give you uh, the values for all interest rates, yeah? especially fractions, 5.5%. Yeah? You go further and you look at the table, you may not be able to find the interest rate for 17%. 17%, yeah? the future value table, you cannot find the value. Yeah? That is one thing, a fraction is not shown, and the period yeah? start, I think, stops at uh, 50 or 60. Yeah? So you don't have 200 periods. And therefore, uh, the use of the table is rather limited. Yeah? It's also limiting. Yeah? It is not very accurate. Okay, the interest rate, all, all interest rates are covered, not all periods are covered. Yeah? And therefore, you won't get precise answers yeah? using time value of money table. Alright, so what is the effect of compounding yeah, in this particular case? So how do you answer this? Yeah? So you answer this by computing the future value without compounding. So without compounding, you can earn simple interest. Yeah. So what is the value, future value with simple interest? You get this here. Yeah? 10, which is the same here, multiplied by 1 plus, yeah, this 5.5%, you multiply with 200 first. You then raise to the power of 200. Yeah? This is simple interest. So it's 5.5% per year for 200 years. So if you multiply this, this will be the total amount of interest. Yeah. Uh, in terms of rate yeah, over 200 years then you add with 1 then you multiply with uh, 10 you get uh, 120 yeah? that's the answer 120 
Now this 120 is the total value, this is dollars, yeah? Despite investing for 200 years, you get only 120 ringgit, yeah? Or dollars. You started with 10 dollars, you get more, but note this, how much do you get here, yeah? Nearly close to half a million, yeah? All right, so then uh, you invest for a longer period, the compounding effect yeah, becomes very pronounced, yeah, very significant or very substantial. Right? When it is a short period of time, two years, three years, four years, or five years, okay, then the difference between compound interest and simple interest may not be very uh, significant or substantial. Yeah? Right? So that's an important uh, value yeah, to understand. Right, so compounding added the difference yeah, between this and this, yeah, which is 447069.84 into the value of the investment. All right, now we look at another later. This is still future value, but we can use future value formula as a general yeah, growth formula. Okay, suppose your company expects to increase unit sales or widgets by 15% per year for the next five years. We currently sell 3 million widgets in one year. How many widgets do you expect to sell in five years? So, now notice, yeah, in this problem also you can identify three main elements. The first one is the rate of growth, yeah, 5, 15%. Yeah, this rate of growth increase, yeah, is similar to the interest rate. Yeah, it's exactly the same as the interest rate in this particular context, yeah. 15% is the interest rate. Now, the term is 5 years, okay, so you can see the term here. If you currently sell 3 million, this is present value, yeah, 3 million widgets. The present value is not in dollars, yeah, but it's in widgets, yeah, units, it's 3 million. So if this 3 million grows every year uh, at 15% for 5 years, at the end of the 5 years, what would this value of sales be? Yeah? So it's the same as future value. So we can use this formula, future value at time n, okay, is equals to the present value at time 0 multiplied by 1 plus r raised to the power of n. Okay, so we can replace this with sales at the end of year n is equals to sales now multiplied by 1 plus g, okay, this r we replace with g and raised to the power of n, number of years, yeah? so s5 is 3 million multiplied by 1 plus 15 percent or 1.15 raised to the power of 5, therefore you get 6,034,072 units. Yeah? Here you round it off to the nearest unit, yeah? you cannot have fractions of a unit. Okay, and therefore this is uh, the answer. Yeah? So you can use this future value formula for growth as well. Yeah? Right. You can use this table. Okay, This table, you have 15% from the table. And for five years, yeah, you can get the value. It is 2.0144, uh, 114, sorry. And you multiply with 3 million, you get 6,034,000. Yeah? That's it. Yeah? So this is not very accurate. It's 72 units short. Okay, but this is close enough. Yeah? So the, here it's an approximation. You can use this yeah, time value of money table to solve the same problem. Yeah? Alright, so we are coming to the end of the first part, yeah, which is future value. So we look uh, at a review. Yeah? What's the difference between simple interest and compound interest? Simple interest, you earn interest on the original principal only. Yeah? Compound interest, you earn interest on the original principal plus the interest that you have earned in earlier periods. Therefore, that is called compound interest. Yeah? That's the difference between the two. Yeah? Suppose you have $500 to invest and you believe that you can earn 8% per year over the next 15 years. How much would you have at the end of 15 years? Using compound interest. Okay, so you have the present value here, you have the interest here, you have the term here. So the future value is not known, you replace that in the formula. So you get this value here, 500 multiplied by 1 plus R raised to the power of N you get 1586. If you use the table, okay, you get a slightly different answer, yeah, okay, which is approximation, and this is rounded, therefore you get a slightly different answer, but this is close, yeah, all right. 